good morning. Hey, I am answering a question today that was sent in to me from uh, a young pastor in Uganda, and it is a question about one of the verses that um, I reference in the CCIM college course. So I'm just going to answer that here in live video, and uh, we'll begin a bit of a library about this. The verse is James 5. 16. Uh, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, uh, as this young pastor has been teaching this uh, within the communities where he has influence, uh, there's been a question about this. What does this mean? Does this mean that we tell everyone uh, what we've done wrong or bad? Um, what does it mean? So, a number of things come to my mind, the way that I understand this verse. And, and I don't know that this that I'm going to say this in any order. But one, it's talking about authenticity and transparency, first of all. Um, in order to be honest with God, we have to first of all come to honesty with ourselves. Uh, we cannot be authentic with the Lord if we're not, first of all, authentic with ourselves. So one of the things that this verse is speaking to initially is um, to come out of denial in terms of the things that have not gone right in our life by our own hand, by our own means. But like what are the things where we have messed up our own lives these are the things that uh, instead of putting on layers of denial or excuse or blame uh, we want to come into authenticity where we simply have this freedom of heart and will um, to say yeah I did that and to just leave it at that this is a hard thing to do we're not generally taught how to do this our our initial response within our own hearts, of course, is always to hide, right? Adam and Eve hid right away. They realized they had sinned and they went and they hid. It was the first natural sort of response. Um, but we don't have to hide before the Lord. So part of what this verse is talking about is, is let's just be honest with ourselves here. And, and then let's be honest with each other. So that's the initial thing is, um, confessing our sins to one another. Now, uh, now, of course, this doesn't mean we're telling everybody everything. Uh, there is to be wisdom used within our lives and with the people that we trust, or who are the ones we can trust, who are the mature ones, who are the mature believers in our life, who are the ones who understand uh, God's extravagant love for us, and that he carries uh, all the wrongdoing within himself and paves a way for us to go forward free of these things, um, healed and whole and clean. Uh, these are the people that we would confess to, basically. You know, not everyone is wise and not everyone is loving and not everyone understands God's extravagant love. So we don't want to necessarily confess our sins to one who has not found the love of God for themselves because they won't pass it on. They don't have it to pass on. Uh, we don't want to... The, the whole point of this verse is for healing, right? Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you can be healed. Healing is the point. Uh, further condemnation and shame is not the point. That doesn't heal us. It doesn't free us. Uh, it compounds the weight upon and in and over and through our lives. So we don't, we don't want to do that. So we look for those who understand the love of God, who have found the Lord's grace and mercy for themselves, who have come into God's forgiveness uh, in a full and healed and whole kind of way where they're resting in the work of Jesus Christ for themselves. They're not any longer having to prove anything. They're not having to defend themselves. They're not needing to make excuses or blame or give reasons or rationale as to why such and such happened or why they did this or that. But they've come into this easy place of, yeah, that's a part of my journey and that's a part of who I was. And But by the grace of God, I'm not that anymore. When a person has this stance, they can then extend that to others. Uh, so then when we share something from our own uh, woundedness, from our own sin, from our own dark places, uh, we, when we share that with a person who has seen and known and felt and tasted the love of God, then that person can pass on to us what they themselves have received. 
they know that no matter what it is that has gone wrong for us and in and over and through us, like by, again, by our own hand, if we're talking about our sins, then that God has covered that and that he carries that and that he's big enough for it. And we can bring all of the ugly rocks, so to speak, out of our pockets and we can put them before the Lord and before the cross, uh, bring them to Jesus, and Jesus is just really so thankful that we have finally brought these things out in the open to him. Uh, I've been a prayer minister for uh, about 15 years. And so I get to see people bringing stuff out of, like the rocks out of their pockets, basically. Uh, we come in, the, in, an, in an intimate space, a safe space, ourselves and the Lord. Uh, and there's a welcome and there's peace and there's the presence of the Lord. And then they can bring stuff out of their pockets that they maybe have never told anybody else. Many times people will say, oh, I've never shared this with anybody. And I get to watch um, the, the Lord's response to them and the change that comes over them as they come transparent and come risking. Um, when they finally come to the end of themselves with whatever it is they've been carrying and they bring that uh, out onto the table before the Lord, it's astounding. It's absolutely astounding. And I get to watch this, and I've watched this with dozens and dozens of people over over more than a dozen years and uh, and then I've experienced it myself as well and so people will bring stuff before the Lord and of course we're always sort of terrified at that moment um, you know we have a, a, a shrinking um, thing where we're not sure that um, we will be welcomed or accepted or received and every single time God says this is basically what he says the Spirit just relays to people, thank you for bringing that to me. I have been waiting so long for you to bring that to me because I want to lift the burden of it from your being and off of your back and off of your heart and your mind and your spirit. So, so this is part of what this verse is talking about. We don't get to experience this unless we come willing to bring our worst things to the Lord. But it doesn't happen just between us and God one-on-one, -on -one necessarily. There, this verse also speaks to the truth that healing, our healing and our freedom and our wholeness comes in context and in relationship with each other. Because that's what the whole thing is. God is relational. God is um, relational within the Godhead, but, he's, but God is relational with us. The whole point is relationship, to restore relationship, to redeem relationship, to heal relationship. So our healing, um, so this relationship focus is, that's not even a focus, it's so much bigger than that. But anyways, this relationship focus um, is how, what plays out within the body of Christ. Uh, it's why there's so much eating together and fellowship together and community together and uh, exhortation of how to be in relationship with each other and how to uh, be in honor to one another and how to extend the love of God to each other. These are all relational things. These are not, it, it's never meant to have been head knowledge. Uh, you know, we don't come to Jesus so we can create doctrinal creed necessarily even though we need to understand uh, that at the heart of it it's relational and so our healing is relational as well my own biggest wounds have been um, at the hands of others but my own biggest healing has been at the hands of others uh, wounding happens within relationship but relationship can bring healing and when we risk to share the deepest hardest parts of our own lives with others uh, we will find a healing and we find this healing again when we share with those who are who are trustworthy who are worthy to be sharing with actually 
and who have the heart of the Lord, who can say to us as we share, oh my, I'm so sorry that that was a part of your life and a part of your journey that never should have been there. Or when we share our sins, they can say, ah, oh, yeah, that's pretty tough. Uh, but you don't have to live free of that. Or bound to that anymore. You can live free from that. And this is the ministry that we have for each other. And it's where freedom and healing and wholeness happens. Because when, pe when people bring their sins sort of the rocks in their pockets out on the table before myself and the Lord, you know, if we're in a, that sort of a, a setting or situation or that's what we've agreed to do. My privilege and role and opportunity is to say to them, okay, let's unhook this from you now. You do not need to go forward with the sins of your own past attached to you. That's what Jesus Christ came to do to undo, is to remove these things. So, James 5, 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Hmm. We don't want to make this confession a ritual thing. We don't want to make it into legalism. Uh, some have done that, where we have to confess on a regular basis or we're not right with God. That's not what this is talking about. It's talking about um, the opportunity for freedom and wholeness. And that freedom and wholeness comes by the power of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and it comes in community and in, in, in relationship one to another, where we advocate for each other. Where we say, even though that has been, <clears throat> excuse me, even though that has been a part of who you have been, uh, today I stand in the name and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and I agree uh, that you no longer need to go forward with this anymore you can be free of it, uh, that the person you once were, you don't any longer need to be. And, and we're going to declare that today together uh, in the name of Jesus. So confessing our sins to one another, it's about authenticity and transparency uh, with ourselves, first of all. Um, that's the hardest thing. And then with the Lord, before the Lord, he's big enough for anything, whatever it is. Uh, sins have covered over a multi uh, sins have been covered over by a multitude of love and <clears throat> and uh, so transparency sins covered over and then freedom and healing and wholeness in each other and this place where we know we're welcomed and we're healed yeah. there's probably some more but that's what this verse is talking about we want communities where it's safe to bring um, the deepest parts of ourselves and to find welcome, because that's the gospel of Jesus Christ.